Hey guys, so this tutorial is inspired by Rick and Morty. Um, <laughs> ants in your eyes, Johnson. I'm ants in my eyes, Johnson, here at Ants in my eyes, Johnson's Electronics. I mean, there's so many ants in my eyes, and there's so many TVs, microwaves, radios. I if you guys have seen that, um, it made me want to make a tutorial about swarms. So we're going to learn how to make a swarm like this, these ants. Uh, but you could use this for fireflies or fish or um, anything that you want to have a, like animals or critters running around kind of uh, sporadically. So yeah, <laughs> I didn't really think this through, this is kind of gross, but oh well, yeah. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, to make a swarm, um, I'm going to use ants, like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, but again, you can use this for, you know, fish or other insects or um, any animals or particles that you want to kind of randomly run around. Um, so I'm just going to start off by drawing an ant. I'm going to hit Command G and turn on the grid on, on my canvas, and I'll go ahead and go to frame zero and I'll select uh, create shape or draw shape and select the ellipse tool ellipse why isn't it selecting oh there it goes uh, circle I'll just draw some circles here real quick and I'll go ahead and shrink down this first one this doesn't this isn't gonna look that good at all I'm actually just doing this really fast just to uh, give you an example and the ants are going to be so small that you won't be able to really see them uh, details so it doesn't matter if they're uh, super good looking it's just going to be some circles and some lines actually so there's the body and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do add points and just draw one leg just to stroke I'll hit U and click on it and then the space bar to fill it and then I'll go ahead and uh, use W and the width tool and just make the line bigger or thicker. And let's go ahead and shrink that down a little bit. And this, again, this isn't going to be fancy. It's, uh, you won't be able to see it. Um, this is just so there's a little bit of movement so it looks like they're really crawling. So I'm going to select the uh, stroke for the leg that I just made and do a command C, command V, copy and paste and command V again to paste it again. Then I'll hit T and select, uh, holding shift down, select all three of the legs and do a command C, command V to copy and paste. And then I'll flip those and move them over here. I'm going to hit Q, just selecting the body parts and then hitting the up arrow after they're all selected. I, I hold shift down to select them all together and then just hit uh, the arrow upwards just so they're up on the top and then I'm just gonna go to frame one and I'll actually uh, let me move some of these around a little bit again this is just to get some movement it won't uh, the ants will be so small you won't be able to tell that you know I could make a better walk cycle but I think this will be fine so I'll select all of those or actually let's do this um, let me select all the points do a command A selecting all of those and I'm just hitting T and I'm just uh, clicking on the character just a little bit just so it makes a keyframe for everything. And then I'll go to frame six. I'll move the legs just a little bit. And then I'll go to the first frame, select those keyframes, copy, command C, and then go to frame 12, command V paste just so we just get a little movement on the legs it it doesn't look great but that's okay and then we'll go ahead and select the last keyframes and cycle and just go to two 
and then we have just this little bit of movement uh, repeating like that. Okay, so now that we have our little ant running, let's go ahead and name that ant. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a uh, particle layer. And or actually, first thing we'll do is we'll create a path. So we're just going to call it ant path. You can call it whatever you like, but this is just to uh, make our character uh, run around or give a path for the ants to run on. So with that vector layer created, we'll just grab the free uh, freehand tool. Uh, we can go ahead and unclick auto stroke. We don't have to actually see it, so we'll just turn that off and we'll leave auto weld on and turn off trim in. I don't think we need that either. So then you can just draw a path and you can make it real crazy. This is uh, just uh, random, which is what we're going for is kind of a random feel. And then I like to reduce these points. So I'm going to use the re a point reduction tool and just paint on that uh, path just so there's not so many points because there really doesn't need to be that many. And you can manually go in and click on some of these and uh, pull them apart. See, some of these have intersected. Um, let me just delete some of those. I don't want it to be too messy. And, oops, I don't want to do that. I'm hitting T, and then I'm going in and I'm just grabbing some points and del hitting delete. I just want the uh, path to be a little bit more separated than that. It gets bunching up a little bit. And go and delete these. Whoops. And you can adjust this after you've uh, made the animation too. So I'll, I'll leave it like this for now. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna, going to um, click on our ant. So we have our character, and then we'll go ahead and select this button right here, which is called the Follow Path tool. And once you click on that, you'll see that your stroke appears, the ant path. Even though it's, you're not on that layer, it appears. So if you click on it anywhere, it's going to um, the ant's going to snap onto the path. And then up here is the percentage. This is just the uh, starting point and ending point of where you want the uh, ant to be. So if you type in zero and I hit return. This is where I started drawing the path. So this is point zero. And then if I go into the timeline somewhere and then type in 100 and hit enter, it's going to create a new keyframe. And this keyframe represents the end of the path. So from zero to 73, it's going to follow that path. So as I drag through the timeline, you can see it's running really fast through the uh, path that we created. Um, and then the farther away this last keyframe is, the slower it's going to go. So we just have to find the right f speed that we want the ant to run on. And um, let's also select the ant and shrink them down. And, oops. Shrink them way down. Okay. So now, when I drag along the timeline, you can see the ant's actually following that path. You can't see it right now, but it's actually just following along. And let me unclick that so you can see it a little better. I'll just click on the path so you can see the ant moving. So when I drag through it, he's just running through the track or the path. But we want him to follow the path also. So double click the ant, and then under options, you'll see uh, this button that says rotate to follow path. All that's going to do is going to turn the ant to f make it look like it's walking on the path. So if I hit OK, let's click on the path again. Now you can see when I drag through, the ant is actually, his head is actually on the f front of the path and he actually curves along with the uh, um, path. But see, it's way, way, way too fast. So we're going to slow that down by going to the ant layer 
Well, we'll just go ahead. I'm just going to select that keyframe uh, following the path. I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to hit Command X to just cut, cut it. It's going to be in the clipboard though, so we can paste it somewhere else. So I'm just going to go way down here to, let's go to 1000 and paste. So copy V. So now that uh, last keyframe's there. I also want to extend the timeline to show the animation to a thousand. So I'm going to select this window and type in 1000 and hit return. So now it's highlighted blue from zero to a thousand. Then we can go back to the beginning and we can see how fast he's moving. And now we've got an ant running around following this path that we've drawn. Now, let me go back to the beginning. I'm also going to set the uh, first keyframe to follow the path to linear, just so it keeps a constant speed, so it's not slowing, uh, slowing down. It just keeps a constant pace. So now you can see the ant's legs are moving a little bit, and he's following that path. And then um, to make a swarm, pretty simple. Obviously, it's just making a uh, particle layer. So we're going to go ahead and group the ant and the ant path together. So we'll go ahead and do a group. And I'm just calling it ant group. The reason I'm putting the ant group and the path together is just to keep keep them uh, together to in, in sync. So the particle layer knows to uh, do a particle of the group, not just the ant. So now that we have it in a group, we'll go ahead and do a new particle layer. We'll just call this ants. Drag the uh, group that we just made into the particle. Now we've got a whole bunch of ants. And by default, they're flying all over the place. We want them to be all following that path and not moving around. So we'll go to the particle options right up here. Then click particle options. Um, I'm just going to set the particles to 30. So 30 for the, oops, 30 for the particles preview and 30 for the actual count. Then we'll do lifetime frames, zero. And we'll zero everything out. So go ahead and just go through all of the tabs and just put zero in everything. Zero, 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 zero. Okay? So now we have 30 ants that are all running around. Um, but they're all doing the same thing. So we need to go into particle options and select randomize playback. Okay? So now the, there's going to be 30 ants running around in different places. Now you can see also too that there's an ant frozen here, uh, quite a few of them that aren't moving. That's because uh, I forgot to, uh, under the ant layer, follow path. They need to keep cycling around this uh, path. So we'll go to frame 1000. Make sure you select that last keyframe for follow path. Right click and cycle. And we'll just go to two. And close that out. Now you'll see the ants are all moving and they're all following that path that we created. If I click on the path, you can see where the path is. But when you select the particle layer, you can't see it. So now they're all crawling around, which is good. And what I like to do to create the illusion of making this a little bit more realistic, we can just go ahead and duplicate that entire layer. So let's go ahead and just select that particle layer and hit duplicate. And we'll just leave it at ants2. And I'm going to do a couple of things to make the second set a little different. So let's go into the ant path. And then this one, we can make these a little bit faster. So we'll just go ahead and drag the uh, follow path out a little bit. And that, that's going to make them, actually, that's going to make them a little slower. Um, let me change the timeline to uh, 1080 just so we have a little bit more room. So now these are going to move a little bit slower and we're going to go ahead and um, click on the path itself and just move some of these points around. 
Now you can just move them individually. Actually, let's do this on frame zero. I'm, let's go back. Because I just did that. And that's okay if you do it in the timeline. They're just going to change as the timeline goes. So let's go to frame zero. I'm just going to change it with the magnet tool and just pull some of these points around just so there's a little uh, variety in where they're moving. Okay. And it's not distorting the ants themselves, it's just moving the path around. So now when they move around, they'll be in a slightly different position. So let's go ahead and play both of those together. And you get a little bit more uh, random motion. Um, this is really good, especially for ants, because they do follow each other um, on paths. So now that we have a swarm created, let's go ahead and put this on a picture. So. I'll go ahead and import an image. Um, let's see, where's Swarm? I'll grab my cartoon background, my kitchen background that I made. I'll go ahead and put this on the bottom. Now, obviously, these ants are too big for this kitchen unless you're making monster ants. So we'll go ahead and select both of these uh, layers, particle layers, and just shrink them down to the size we want them to be. Okay? And then obviously they're running on a flat surface it was from like the bird's eye view, so we can actually with both of those particle layers selected go ahead and select the XY rotate uh, tool, rotate layer XY, click on that and then click on your particle layers and just drag upwards. And that's going to turn them sideways. Why isn't it turning the other one? Um, hold on a sec. Let me do one at a time. Turn that. And then turn this one. And if you see, if I do a transform layer tool, this is making it more uh, 3D. It's just going to make it look more realistic. So there, it looks like they're running on the ground. And you can keep adjusting that too. I'll go ahead and turn that even more turn that second particle layer even more. There we go. Now, you saw in the beginning of the animation too, they were crawling up the uh, refrigerator and the cabinets and stuff. All you have to do to do uh, to make them go where you want is to change the paths. So I'll, I'll select the uh, ants to particle group and then the path, ant path, and I'll go ahead and um, on frame zero Go ahead and hit T and select some of these points and move them around. So let's say I want them to, some of them to climb up the uh, refrigerator. I'll go ahead and I can just add points too. So I'm going to hit A and I'm just going to add points and have uh, draw some lines going up the uh, refrigerator. I'll go ahead and curve them out. You don't have to curve them out, but I'm just doing that so they have kind of they don't make sharp turns. Um, and to make it look more realistic, put a point um, like at the bottom of the refrigerator and then go back out onto the floor. And then this one we can straighten out. And you can use the magnet tool. And it's it can be messy. You don't have to make uh, the whole point of um, having a swarm or just having something random is to just make it kind of sloppy-ish, because that makes it look more uh, realistic, I think. So we can do that. And you can scale the entire uh, path if you want to. You can um, select it all and transform it if you want. It doesn't really matter. The ants are going to look the same no matter what. So I'll go ahead and add some points here. Have them crawl up to the top of the counter crawl over the counter, maybe even go up the toaster. So again, I'm just I've just hit A and I'm at, I'm just adding points. And now that the tool's selected, it's just um, adding points when I click on the line. You don't have to get to you don't have to keep uh, selecting A. And then I'm going to hit C and curve some of these points out. And then when I hit play, now we have ants going up the uh, side of the uh, 
the refrigerator and up here on the counter you see them climbing up here and the other cool thing about this using particles is that if you want to do less or more you can just go into the particle layer and just change the attributes so if I go in and say particles say I want instead of 30 I want 200 let's preview it too so we can see it now there's a lot more and but now you can see too even in the preview it's starting to slow down because it has so much an animation going on and it looks a little too now you can actually see the path because they're covering it so much so it's a good idea to to make it look more random leave the count pretty low and duplicate and then make uh, some changes so you can do like that I can make another duplication of the one I just made and again go into the path we'll make these guys a little faster so we'll grab that follow path and bring that down and then let's go ahead and select the path and then use the magnet tool to change that around too so we'll go to frame zero and let me make the radius bigger so I can grab more points and then just kinda smush them around move some more on the table maybe add more on the uh, top of the counter the more jumbled it is the longer they'll stay up there because they have to follow more of the path so and let's see how that looks and there you go um, so that's how I would make a swarm at least um, and again you can use this this is really sporadic but if you wanted to make something more uniform you could use this for fish um, lightning bugs you could just make very simple paths and just have have them kind of fly around and light up so uh, yeah hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any questions or comments just leave them down below thanks